Hi all, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach and today we're looking at the second free response question from the 2003 AP Calculus AB exam. So we have a particle moves along the x-axis so its velocity at times t is given by this. At time t equals 0 the particle is at position x equals 1. Find the acceleration of the particle at times t equals 2. Is the speed of the particle increasing at t equals 2 or why or why not? Okay so a of t always the antiderivative of v of t. But because um, we've got to use a calculator for this, what we have to do is we have to say like, well, a of t is, it's, if I add up all of its velocity from time zero, for example, to two, that'll be its total change. Um, wait, what am I doing? Why am I doing the integral? I don't know what I'm thinking. Uh, I was thinking integral because I thought that would be harder. Uh, that's for position. Uh, acceleration. Uh, of t is the derivative of velocity. Okay, so I got to take the derivative of this function, and I want to plug it in too. So I'm taking the derivative of this function at t equals two. Now I have not done this in a while, uh, so give me a, a tech. Uh, let's see, but I'm pretty sure we're doing n derivative. I'm going to start with the function. The function is negative. And I'm going to use x instead of t. It doesn't really matter what variable you use when you do the derivative here because it's a numerical calculation. Sine, and let's just make sure I'm in radians. I am in radians. Uh, sine of x squared divided by 2. Okay. Um, derivative with respect to x, and then do I plug in the value? Plug in 2? Hopefully that will work. Oh, okay. Let's see if that worked. So uh, I just did 1.588, okay? So we'll check with the answers if I did that right. But in general, you're just using the calculator to use the n derivative to calculate the derivative. Now, is the speed of the particle increasing at t equals 2 or not? Well, a of t is greater than 0. So when do you know the speed of the particle? That's when the acceleration is in the same direction of its, as its velocity. That's something you just remember. If its velocity is positive and its acceleration is positive, it means it's speeding up in the positive direction. If its acceleration is negative and velocity is negative, that means it's negative velocity and it's going more negative. So also speeding up. So what I want to know is what the sign of velocity. What is v? Oh, sorry, v, a at two is greater than zero. What's v at two? Well, that's equal to negative two plus one sine of one. Okay, so let's compute what that is. It's negative 3 times sine of 1. I get negative uh, 2.52. So in this case, it's uh, decreasing. Uh, no, it is not, it is, uh, speed is decreasing. Or the answer is no. Because a of 2 and v of 2 have different signs. B, find all times in the open interval when the particle changes directions and justify your answer. Okay, changing direction is when the velocity hits zero because it goes from positive velocity to negative velocity or negative velocity to positive velocity. So I want to know every time it changes zero. So um, the way I do that is I look at when the derivative is equal to zero. So I want to know when a of t is equal to zero. Okay, I want to know when the derivative of this is equal to zero. Now, can I plot derivatives? Let's try and see if I can plot a derivative. Um, or I can plot the velocity itself and just see when it goes from positive to negative and negative to positive. That might be easier. Sine of uh, x squared divided by 2. Okay, I have to change the window because I had uh, messed with the window before. Let's see. I want to go from 0 to, say, 10. And then the y value, I want to go from, say, it could be negative uh, 5 to 5. Well, we'll go to 10. Maybe we'll do negative 10 to 10. Just the default. Okay, 
Now, when does the velocity change direction? Or wh when it changes direction? Actually, it's when v of t is equal to zero. I should just solve this, v of t is equal to zero. So that happens at negative t plus one sine t squared plus two. So if this is zero, either this is zero, so either t plus one equals zero, or sine of t squared over two is equal to zero. Well, this happens at um, t is equal to negative one. So th this one is outside of my range from zero to three. So I don't really care about this one. This one happens when t squared over two is equal to some multiple of pi, because um, sine is zero at like um, zero and pi and two pi and stuff like that. So t would equal uh, the square root of two pi k. And so here we need to find all the values where um, um, where k is an integer, all the multiples of k that are between zero and three. So I could do the square root of, um, oops, square root of two pi times one. So that's 2.5 and then times two is probably too big. So only at, the only time that happens is that k equals one or t is equal to the square root of two pi. Now you should do a, a second derivative check and just make sure that um, you could either do second derivative test or first derivative test, but you could say that V of T changes signs here. I did it by looking at the graph. Um, and that should happen. Uh, I know like it wasn't super obvious. Um, if I, let's see if I did uh, only going up to three and then I went negative two to like positive two. Yeah, see, it's this one over here, square root of two pi. It's like, you see, this is zero, one, two, and three. And so this one, this point right here is like square root of two pi, okay? So C is find the total distance traveled by the particle from zero. So total distance traveled is I integrate the absolute value of V of T dt, okay? And so that's all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna plug that into the calculator, math, integrate and I want to do absolute value where's the absolute value I think it's in math absolute value so you can, your calculator could do absolute value so that's why you want to do that negative x plus 1 sine of x squared divided by 2 oops I need to close the absolute value um, integrating over x I'm going from 0 to 3 4.3334. Okay, and then D, during the time interval zero, oh, let me just double check, I answer all the question, yeah. During the time interval zero, less than or equal to T, less than equal to three, what is the greatest distance between the particle and the origin? And show your work with your hand. So I want the greatest distance between the particle and the origin. So the distance from the origin is just the absolute value of X of T, right? That's what I want to be the biggest. So I want x of t to be the, either a maximum or minimum, the biggest or smallest value. So how do I know when x of t, this is the, you know, if I want the max of this, it's really x of t is min or max. And the way I need to do that is I need to look at um, computing this. And so this is what I was doing before. Well, x of t is its change in position um, from zero to t, we'll say v of, tau, d tau, I don't know what letter you want to use, I use a weird t, it's a Greek letter t, plus the initial position. Okay, so this is the calculation I want to maximize. Now, how do I maximize this? Well, uh, I want x prime of t to equal zero, right, to find the critical points. And when I take the derivative of this, um, by by fundamental derivative, I just get, this is just v of t, derivative of position is velocity. So I want to know when this is zero, okay? Now, um, this will only give me candidates for min and max. And so I'm gonna get values of t here, okay, where v of t is equal to zero. And uh, I, I wanna check those points. I also wanna check the endpoints. Um, because when you wanna find the absolute min and absolute max, you have to check um, all the local relative min and maxes, as well as the ext extrema. 
So we're going to create a table here of t and x of t. And x of t is going to be done by this calculation. So at t, um, we're going to do the endpoint. So we're going to do 0. Um, the only point we found where this is equal to 0 between 0 and 3 was square root of 2 pi. And then we're also going to check 3. And we're going to use the calculator to compute x of t, use this equation to find x of t. So we're going to do math. We're going to do integrate. We're going to integrate the velocity one, which is, uh, if only I had, uh, well, that's fine. I just re enter it in. Might be able to have a clever way of uh, using the previous entry, but that's fine. This doesn't take that long. That's the sign. Okay, I'm integrating from 0 to 3. Oh, I need to say I'm integrating over 0. And I also want to add in. I want to add in plus the initial position. What's uh, it's at? Starts at one. Plus, oh, whoops. Now I'm messing it all up. Okay, got that. Got that. I had to say x, then integrating zero to three. Oh, no, that's that's 0 to 3. So actually, at 0, the position is, is 1. So I already know that value. I have to do, um, we'll do 3 just to get the final one. This is negative 1.197. And then I want to plug in the square root of 2 pi. So I can do that as just modifying the previous entry. Uh, second square root of 2 pi. I get negative 2.265. Okay, so which one of these is furthest from the origin? It's this one, because I just take the absolute value. So it's 2.265, um, and that's the maximum distance away from the origin. Okay, so let's look at the solutions, see how we did. In the question two, uh, 1.587, and it's decreasing. So we got 1.588, and it's decreasing, that's good. And then they got square root of 2 pi. Particle change directions at square root of 2 pi. They got 4.333, 4. Point, where did I get? 4.334. And then this, so the distance, do, 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 hence the greatest distance from origin is 2.265. Okay, so hope you found that helpful. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content. And see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.